Well, folks, uh, this is my video for October the 12th, 2019, <coughs> video number 3,234. And as you can see, I have Steve Hart with me, and uh, we're going to be talking about twin flames or soul families. Steve, I hope you're hearing me fine. Yep, we're here. So you want to hear what I have to say about this, huh? <laughs> I do, and you know the reason. <laughs> Yeah, the reason why is because uh, I've recently come into a new relationship. That's why you see this big smile on my face. Um, and it's been, um, it's, it's, I've waited about um, over three years of being single here lately. In the last six months, I've been feeling the um, desire to have a, a new relationship with a lady. And, um, and just recently in the last um, uh, month or so, I've, I've, got to meet her and, and get to know her very quickly, actually. Um, and I, that's part of the reason why I guess we want to probably talk about the, the concept of uh, the twin flames or, or the uh, soul family, um, because sometimes people say, well, you know, I, I can only see people say, well, you have to find your twin flame. And, other, and, and I, all I can say is, the connection that uh, she and I have together is very, very strong. Um, and Having so, met both of you together, I would agree. Yeah, you, yeah, you met us, and so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> let, let me just share with you uh, uh, some things. My first, we have to preface it, everything that we're saying here today. That if you believe in uh, twin flames or soul families. <clears throat> You have to assume that the individual believes that we existed before we came into this world, uh, and that we were conscious spirit beings, and we're now living in physical form. So, if, assuming that that we are in agreement of that, we can move forward. Now, the premise of that means that uh, if if we are if we have a soul family or a twin flame then uh, there's been an agreement or um, an assignment given to us before, before we came into this world. So that's, that's the premise of everything, okay? Now, here's, here's, here's the, uh, the conflict for me. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been married three times, <laughs> okay? I had, uh, and I had another girlfriend after those three marriages. I was very close to for several years until she passed away. And then I've recently met this new gal. So the question is, you know, were those women beforehand my twin flames? And I would say, well, maybe they're, it's not quite the way we think it is. Because in our mind, we have this concept that there's only one person that is our twin flame and we have to find that person and then we will fulfill our purpose here on earth. <clears throat> but I found several women that I felt very close to and felt like I was fulfilling my purpose with them. So I'm not, I really don't lean towards a concept that we have twin flames. I lean more to the concept that we are part of soul families and when we when we come into a, a relationship, and and that can mean not just an intimate relationship, it can mean a friendship, like my friendship with you. I I really believe that we're you and I and the people that we are close to mm -hmm. are part of our soul family. And and the reason I say that is because you, you know how some people you click with and other people you don't click with. You know, Absolutely, there doesn't seem to be a connection. And it's not like there's anything wrong with those people. And I kind of like some of those people and, and would like to get to know them, but I never, I never seem to click with them. I never seem to um, build a, a true deep relationship with those people. Let me ask you a question, Steve. Have you ever met anybody that you felt repulsed by when you first met them? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just because you're part of this whole family doesn't mean you're, not, you're always going to be in harmony. You know, the, the, the purpose of soul families and in, in every relationship is for us to further our awareness of who we are and um, for us to, to progress 
So if we if we come into this world and we find there's a, we're in a relationship that's in conflict, maybe that's the agreement you made before you came in that you know you were going to um, push buttons, <laughs> push buttons, right, or, or trigger people to to help us grow. Because I've said this before, some of the most progressive and the most profitable uh, growth that I've had have always been when I was in a relationship with someone. And it's through those relationships that we have to deal with our, our, our own uh, frustrations and conflict and anger and, and our disappointments and, and, and deal with our dark side of our, of us. So, you know, I, that's, that's it. it. Yeah. I think that we will find that we will find friends and relationships where there will be there will be some conflict, but we work through those things. That's that's the important thing is to work through them. Now, you're not going to find, at least my experience would be, you're not going to find uh, a a sole family member if you're not coming into some degree of awareness. You're, um, for example, my, I was born into a family with four boys, my mom and dad, and four boys. Um, that does not automatically mean that I am in, they're part of my soul family. Now, I, I, I definitely think my mother and I were, and my one brother, but the, my, but my other brothers, other two brothers, I'm not close to at all. I, there's, there, we don't click, you know, um, and, and we don't, we don't communicate much. There's very little communication. Now, I'm not, and I'm not trying to pigeonhole everybody and say, well, you're a part of my soul family, you're not. I don't do that. It's not, that, that is not my interest in trying to decide. But there's something, I'll use the word supernatural, in, in re certain relationships that I have with people, you know. And um, when I met this gal, um, let me just tell you uh, how this evolved, because <clears throat> I saw her picture on Facebook with a friend of mine and there was something about her picture that caught my attention. And then I asked my friend and he naturally told me, told me a little bit about her. And I asked her to be friends with me on Facebook and we were friends for over a year and, and only in the last six months did I start conversing with her. And, uh, and then only about, two months ago, I actually met her in person because she lives in another state outside of where I live here in, here in Florida. So the point is, <clears throat> there was something that kept bringing me back to her because, you know, I, in my mind, <clears throat> I've been very content <clears throat> living alone and being single and, and being satisfied with that. But all of a sudden, this desire starts showing up in my heart. And then I see her, and there's something, there's some kind of connection going on here. And it was her smile, it was her eyes, it was something I just, deep inside, I remember saying to myself, I know this girl, I, I, I know her. So my belief system is that we have known each other in previous lives and before we came in. She would agree with you. <laughs> yeah, and she, she agrees with me. And yet we, uh, we are, how we met is it was not based upon the, the spiritual, she was not part of my spiritual circle is what I'm trying to say. Uh, she kind of came out of the blue. And, and uh, but yet now that she, now that I'm in a relationship with her, it's pretty evident that she's now becoming a part of my spiritual circle. And, well, there's, and, a, there's a professional connection. We don't need to go into the details of that, but you know, you, you have, yeah, well, no, yeah, I'm not afraid. You're, to both, talk you're about both entertainers it. in a way. Yeah. We're both entertainers. I'm a, a magician. She's a clown. And so therefore we there, that, that was the initial um, connection. But once, once I got beyond that, I was going, wait a second, who, who is this girl? You know? And, uh, and you're right. She feels exactly the same way, which is amazing. Well, she's a in beautiful fact, soul. I mean, having met her myself, yeah, yeah, you know, right. She's it's impressive. <laughs> she's so, impressive, and the whole yeah. Well, it, I, I, I will have to say, in my past relationships, I've had some beautiful souls in my in, in my life and in, in my marriages, 
and I've loved all of them, but they've but some of them have been a struggle. Uh, some of them have been there's there have been some conflict, um, and that's part of the reason why I'm divorced, I guess. Um, but my if I jokingly I will say this. Part of the reason I've had three marriages and a, and four relationships before this one is because these were like chapters in my life that I'm living in this body in this in this as Steve Hart and so so instead of dying and coming back and reincarnating and have another relationship and had another relationship I've I've had multiple relationships in this time to save myself the time from dying and coming back. <laughs> now that's, that's my joke in my head. I'm, and maybe there's some truth to that. I, I don't know. I will tell you that all through all these relationships, there's been leaps and bounds in my awareness and where I'm at in my consciousness and in, in my belief about who I am and um, major changes. In, in in how I live and how I experience life. I'm not the same person I was when I first got married, you know. And each marriage, each relationship has taken me to another level. Um, and that's what I think it's per that's the purpose. And that's what I was referring to a while ago about the fact that we need to be, have to some degree of, of awareness about who we are. There has to be a desire of, of this of waking up and trying to figure out what this is about, discovering ourself and discovering our purpose. And when you start doing that, then the people who you've made agreements with will show up. Until then, uh, until you start working on yourself, until you start uh, allowing spirit to reveal your true self, that person may not show up. And so therefore, when she does show up, in, in my case, she's, she, the per, timing is perfect. It's not like I had to force this. It, 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 everything unfolded the way it did in a natural way. Now, it, it, Almost say, a miraculous way. I yeah, it's say. true. It, it, <laughs> it, one would say, well, that was, how did you make that happen? Well, I didn't. We just, we just followed our hearts, and it, it happened. And then, the, then there's the aspect of, well, we've only known each other for a few months, you know, on a personal level. And yet our, the depth of our relationship is really deep. And there has been very little conflict of any at all, except that she lives in another state and I live here. And so that's created a little bit of conflict, but, but we're, we are allowing the relationship to evolve in a natural sense. We're not trying to force anything. We're not trying to figure anything out. We, in fact, we did try to sit down and try to figure out a, a little bit about our future, but we came to the conclusion that we don't know, not in this now moment. All we have is this now moment. And so that's, an, that's another re the thing I want to bring up is, is making promises in any relationship or any friendship that I will be with you forever. How can, how can we say that? We don't even know what's going to happen a week, a year, but you can say it is my intention to be with you now and tomorrow and the next now moment and the next now moment that there's a difference between making a promise that you can't keep and holding an intention in your heart. No till death do you part. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and marriage vow says, you know, you'll stay with them until death do us part. And so, <laughs> how can I, I wasn't able to do that in my past marriages you know be it be it that they left or I left whatever however the marriage dissolved so we sometimes you know we make commitments and even just through friendships you know uh, I have friends that I feel close to and I may not see them maybe for a year or two years and we get back together again it's like we've never you know, we've always been close, you know, it didn't change. And others fall away and we, I never make contact with them again. It, it's interesting. So here, here's how, here's my perception of the soul family. We all come from source. 
energy, God, the universe, however you want to refer to it. And as we come into this world in physical form, they're like rivers, streams, streams of the flow of energy. And we're following those streams, and there are certain soul beings that are part of the stream that we're in, that we're a part of, and we begin, we share this, this energy flow of energy pattern. And in that, there's these agreements that we make to help each other fulfill our purpose here. So that's my perception of it. It's, it's the fact that um, I'm connected to everybody. I see the divine within everyone, every human being. In, in every animal and everything in, the, in this world. I see the divine. But I can only relate to the ones that I have been connected to within my soul family, in the, in the depth that I've experienced it. You know, um, it, it, it doesn't happen by accident. It, it, it happens by following the energy patterns. So if, if someone is looking for um, a, a soul, their soul family or their full soul mates, um, then, then you just—it's a natural flow. You have, the, the only work you can do is within you. You do the work within you, and that person will show up. They'll, they'll be—they'll be attracted to you, and then you'll meet. You know. I wish I could experience that. I've had such a disaster with, with relationships. Uh, it's, you know, anyway. well, I, th- I, I, I was married twice, and. This, you know, I, I don't want to go into the details here because it's your, you're making the video with you, but uh, I've experienced some things that make me very leery of relationships with women, period, or men. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not attracted to men, of course, uh, other than a soul family, but not certainly not a romantic connection. Right. I understand. And, and, and um, <laughs> There was something else I was going to share with you. I'm sorry. Know what it was. No, no, that, 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 that's good that you shared that because that's your experience. And I understand the, the reluctance. See, here again, you say I, you like to have that. Well, you can have that, but you, it has to be attached. The, the, the desire has to be there. The desire, and it has to grow. And that desire also has to help you to open up and go through the transformation. You know, so, okay, well, I remember what it was I was going to share. Good. <laughs> the concept of twin flames, if I understand it correctly, is that I'm only half of what I am, and I have to find the other person to come together and become whole. I don't believe that at all. I believe that every one of us is whole. Every one of us has everything we need as we come into this world. The only difference is, is part of the soul family, is that we're a family of spirit beings here to help one another, just as you and I and our other friends. It's a besides, complementary connection. Yeah, it's, it's a support. They to, complement each other. Everybody who comes to our meetup, our conscious meetup meetings, every one of them, is, is in my opinion that comes on a regular basis is part of my soul family but that's why we feel connected that's why we that's why we continue to come together and there and I, I want to I want to interject here that the people that connect at these groups that uh, Steve is talking about are very diverse <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah as far as religion and nationality in many yep. cases and yep. very diverse viewpoints very good, 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 good point, and that's true, because as as I said a while ago, just just as a river flows, um, and you know, cr- creeks and the rain comes down from the mountain and creates the creeks and then eventually rivers and pours into the ocean. It's the same way as as how we come into this world. You know, very diverse from diverse places. You know, and different personalities, different um, nationalities. You know, there's all all those things come into play. But uh, at this stage in my life, you know, now that I'm 66 years old. Um, You're a young man. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I'll consider that. I feel very young. The point I'm saying is, in the years past, I thought I was, you know, had it together. Now I'm at a point now where 
it's not a matter of having it together. It's more about opening up and receiving uh, what is what is there for me. And she, my girlfriend, I'm a new girlfriend now, is 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 feels the same way. It's there's no <clears throat> there's no force in behind this. It's 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 like I said a while ago. It's a natural flow of energy. So that's <clears throat> that's what people need to look for as I have done. And, and I feel that in times past I've struggled and I and experienced some struggling. But now that I'm older, it, I was ready for her and she was ready for me because she was married twice too before me. And so um, it's interesting, you know, um, I, know I know when I went through my first divorce, I was very perplexed about what happened. And then when my second divorce came along, I went to my parents who had been married, you know, they ended up, they were married over 50 years, 55, 60 years together. And I said to them, how do you do this? What, what am I doing wrong? And they, they really didn't have an answer for me. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that they were, they were in love with each other until the day that they both passed on. The point, the point is, is that they, they were a great example. But I, that was not what I that was not what I was experiencing. I'm here. I was having these marriages, and and I can't say any of them were bad. I learned something through every marriage, every relationship, and as the relationships progressed from one to another, the intensity got stronger, and and I learned more and more and more through this relationship because I was becoming more aware of who I was and and uh, what I wanted. So. It, it, it is amazing, and this one that I'm in now is just uh, very exciting, obviously. Uh, well, that's why I wanted to talk about this subject, because, I mean, it's been inspirational watching the connection uh, develop and, and then getting... Yeah, but you, you've known me for the past, I've well, 12 you. years, and when, when my last girlfriend passed away, you know, you saw me go through that, and being alone and being single. I and mean, when she passed on, you know, I experienced a little bit of loneliness, but I immediately in my current awareness transformed that into solitude and not allowed it to bring me down or make me feel anything less, you know? Um, so you've, you've known me over the past three or four years since I've been single now. And, and you've seen how I've just been learned to be content and, and to, enjoy the solitude I had. And, and then you've also heard me begin to talk about my desire to have a new relationship about six months ago or so, you know, so, so yeah. Isn't it, isn't it interesting? It is interesting. I and, agree. <laughs> and I, and I think it's, a, it's, it can be that way for everyone. It really can. The, the, but the key factor is we have to work on ourselves. And I say work, that means really mean a letting go of who we think we are so that we can become the person that we want that, to come together with another soulmate, you know? So. Yeah, well, I know my experience is when my spiritual mom died and left me a portion of her estate, all of a sudden I had a whole bunch of women <laughs> that expressed interest in me. Were they your soul family? <laughs> no, I think they were. they were trying to find someone that, could provide some of the luxuries that they were at. So they really were part of your soul family. That's why they're not there now. Uh, you know, it's, it, it really soured me to a lot of women because it, uh, they, it, it, I looked at them as being gold diggers. And, you know, it, it, sorry. That, that's a judgment, I know. Well. But, but it's also experience. I mean, I, I don't want to go into the details of that. Maybe I will in a another video by myself or something, but uh, it's been painful in, in many instances. Yeah, any, anytime we come into a relationship, be it intimate or just friendship, if we're coming in with the intention to looking for security, or, or uh, which is what you're pretty much describing, you know, financial security or whatever, emotional security, then we're making them probably making a serious mistake. Because it's not based on love; it's based on fear. That the, all those emotional, not the need of no emotional security, the need of financial security, it all comes from fear. 
Well, or even, I even friends. had male friends over the when I inherited money that all of a sudden buddy they were buddy buddy now they wanted to be really close because they wanted something I mean that's I'm thinking of a couple of people in particular but <laughs> I understand it, it, well it, it, that's one the nice it, thing about you scratch your head my current relation yeah my current relationship is that, that neither one of us uh, need uh, anything from each other other than just to share the love that we have, the abundance of love we have. It's not a financial issue. It's not an emotional. I mean, she, she was doing fine before she met me. Like I said, I was doing fine before I met her and I've been living here s successfully here in Florida and she's been doing the same thing up there where she lives. The poor name. So we our coming together has nothing to do about um, survival purposes, you know, it's about the out of the abundance of our hearts that we're having this experience. And I think that's exactly the way it was meant. And, and as I said, I needed to have all the relationships I had up to this point to prepare me with what I'm having now. And it's, it, it's part of the evolution of consciousness, you know, that we all experience. We all, we all are going through an evolution of consciousness as we allow it to come into our lives. It's, it's becoming it's really, more intense and more rapid <laughs> it seems true true that's true so so i'm i'm rejoicing in it <laughs> that's a big smile <laughs> it shows up on my face well and, 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 and as i said the, the amazing thing about this new relationship i'm in there, there is really no struggle in fact i it's almost as if she is she reads my mind she she knows what i want she, I know what she wants before we even express it to each other. And this is, this is a little bit different from the past relationships I've had. I mean, I've had a deep connection. I'm not trying to say I haven't because I have, but the, but this one's even easier, you know, wow. You know, really, really much. If I were to make a list of the things I wanted in, in a new relationship, this is, she's given me everything I want, you know, and I think that everybody can have that. Now, <laughs> Inspiration. As, you said a while, as you said a while ago, though, sometimes they come in to, to teach us something, to have there's some conflict or, you know, differences that show up. But even in my last relationship, she was able to challenge me about some of the things. And, and I'll be honest with you, one of the major things I had to deal with was what I call spiritual pride. Uh, you know, the things that I knew more than she did, or, um, you know, I had this deep esoteric knowledge that no one else had. And that was nothing but spiritual pride. And she would sometimes point that out to me that I was hanging on to that. And of course, I go in defense and say, what do you mean? You know, I'm not ego driven. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next thing you know, spirit saying, you better listen to what she's saying. And I was able to do it because I knew she loved me. I knew she loved me, so I was at a point now where I was able to deal with that. Up until that relationship, I was not really willing to deal with some of that. I still had this, you know, I know something you don't know, or I'm better than you, that type of, and that's nothing but pride, which is fear-based, and um, I mean, pride is good if it's going to bring you to courage, because with if pride brings you to a level of courage where you're willing to face yourself and take responsibility for yourself and stop playing the victim and blaming other people for whatever is going on in your life, then that's good, you know. But if you're stuck in pride, then you're still in a defense mode. You know, you're still defending, well, I have the right to be that way, or I, I know something, you know, and I have this, and, you know, it's, it's still a pride thing. And but I'm grateful that, that I had some pride, but I had to let it go. I had to admit that it, it was not serving me well. So, you know. There we are. Well, I appreciate you sharing this. And by the way, as I as I said earlier, uh, the connection you t you two have is inspirational for me. And I pray that uh, somehow things will open up, and not just me, but but all of us that are on this spiritual path can find the connections we need to bring us to a greater sense of wholeness. Well, I'm hoping that maybe sometime in the future, she and I together can do an interview with you and she can share her side of the story too. You know? I'd love to do that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens. All right. Well, thank you, Steve. Namaste. Blessings.